hello and welcome to the visit with the person of high strangeness. Uh, some, of, some of you have been with us for um, just about four seasons now. And as you know that sometimes we do one show and then another person comes forward with another story. And that is sort of the case here today. I'd like to refresh your memory when we talked uh, to you about the jury duty and uh, um, prisons for profit and things like that. And also some of the human rights issues and they were very popular with you. So today we're going to take you out of that spiritual space that sometimes I put you in and um, uh, share a story with you uh, with, with a lady that uh, I think would be of great interest to you. Um, it, it is actually an exclusive interview and I wanted to let you know that even though most of the shows stand on their own, um, that is not the case with this one. Um, this is a two-parter and this is Crime and Corruption Part 2. There might be a cliffhanger but no more than that. So please tune in next week for the second part of the story. We just didn't want to break it up like this. And uh, so I haven't said all, all that. The first thing I want to do before I introduce you to my wonderful guest, I need to acknowledge um, Margaret Nolan, my director, Justin Wright. That is his step-grandmother. Um, and she passed away just a few um, weeks ago in Cleveland, Ohio. And he wanted me to show you that these were some of the things that were very dear to her. And she was surrounded by all her little critters here the last few years of his life. So safe journey, uh, Margaret. So um, we have now come to the part of the show where I introduce you to my wonderful guest. Uh, her name is Evelyn Cessna. Mm -hmm. As you know, I always have problems with names, so we're glad <laughs> you helped me with that. Well, you're not alone in that, I think. Thank you. <laughs> It's just like the airplanes, and so... Uh, yes, except they're the poor spelling side of the family. They don't dot their I's and make them ease. <laughs> I, I see. But it is just not... Uh -huh. well, well, I'm a foreigner, so I was pretty close, and you're just so delightful, and forgive me for not doing oh, that, right? Oh, that's all right. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to let you set the pace, um, actually, because you have agreed to tell us a very personal story that um, I understand you haven't really been able to tell before. Yes, I was writing a book on it and um, it um, is a hard thing to write because when you do, of course, you have to go through the whole thing over again mm -hmm. and uh, then the legal occasions of it are um, a little hard to get exactly correct. Um, in telling it, I can tell what happened without going through all the legal ramifications. So that makes it a lot easier. And uh, I was awfully glad when you asked me to come. Yeah, like I was telling the friends, some of them been with us for like four seasons and they know that sometimes uh, we have a little help. And if, if the story needs to be told sooner or later, we will get together for a visit like that. Yeah. Now I like to remind the friends that um, this is being taped in Olympia, Washington. Uh, for the friends in, in Lansing and Anchorage and um, Port Townsend and some of the other places. So in order to explain to you where this story takes place, um, we have to take you a little south of Seattle, Washington. Mm -hmm. And so you can kind of get a general idea where the setting of this story is. In Federal Way, that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, it was sort of a wide spot in the road when we uh, went out in 1953. But that's a little ahead of the story. Um, my husband, Jack Cisna, was born and raised in Bellingham. His grandfather was one of the uh, founders of Bellingham, had the first bank, first department store, and so on up there. And uh, Jack was um, a precocious child who was, um, he had the mind that was about five times faster than most people's. And uh, he was the uh, quarterback on the state championship uh, team. He was uh, the, the, uh, the hero in the class plays. He was, you know, he um, had everything going for him. He uh, came down when he had graduated high school to um, the University of Washington and pledged the Phi Gamma Delta, which is a rich man's fraternity, and um, ran for student body president. And um, uh, Rosalini, who was later one of our governors, mm -hmm awfully nice man, was um, uh, one of his campaign managers, and uh, Pomeroy, one of our mayors of the town, was uh, also 
on his team. And um, so he knew his way around and, and had mm -hmm. some wonderful friends uh, out there. And uh, when he was through with the university, he went through law and graduated in 32 from law. And um, uh, two years after um, passing the bar and uh, taking his um, uh, position as a lawyer, he was made uh, president of the Northwest Steamship Company uh, mm -hmm. that had two freighters up to Alaska. So everything was going good for him. Uh, then he received a, um, or he had a client who came to him and she was losing her boarding house. And she asked him what she could do to um, uh, try to save it. And um, so he looked over her bills and he said, uh, I thought you were a widow. I see that you're um, still um, uh, paying premiums every month on insurance for your husband. And she said, yes. Eleven years before, he had, um, he and another man, had um, uh, been killed in the Cascade Tunnel when they were making the road 90 through mm -hmm. the tunnel there in uh, the Cascades. And um, there was so much gas in there that um, they wouldn't, send anybody else in to get the bodies because they didn't want any more deaths and um, so she paid it for seven years and then they gave her um, a form to fill out. Now this was Metropolitan Life Insurance Company but uh, all the insurance companies have that same uh, upon due proof of death clause policy, yeah. and so uh, she um, uh, the uh, and uh, the um, the policy, the forms that uh, were to be filled out uh, said, um, has your husband ever talked about going to a foreign country? Well, she wanted to be real conscientious and, and a couple of years before his death, uh, somebody had offered him a job down in South America building bridges. He hadn't gone, but you know, he had gotten this uh, offer. And so she put that down. Well, they used that as an excuse. They said, well, that's probably where he is. <laughs> But nevertheless, you go on paying, so when we uh, find proof of his actual death that we will pay. And my husband was so incensed that an insurance company uh, doesn't do the very thing they're set up in business to do, and that is to insure people. And um, yeah, I, I was going to yeah. add something here. Um, we have a friend in Colorado named Loretta that you're familiar with, and Loretta and I was talking and uh, actually I accidentally dialed her number. I didn't know what I was going to talk to her about. And she said that uh, a very similar case had happened in Exeter, uh, actually in Pittston, Pennsylvania, where a mine collapsed and there were seven people mm -hmm. that couldn't be proven dead because nobody wanted to go in and they didn't get paid either. And she yeah. requested that I tell, make you aware well, of that. Well, there's thousands of thousands people that died. die every year that don't, uh, yeah. where you can't get the body. Yeah. Uh, so he started uh, Federal O-Line Life Insurance Company, and um, uh, right away the first thing was to um, not ha to exclude that, and they always paid within 48 hours of claim, so that now if there was no body and there were suspicious circumstances, they uh, would pay by the month, and uh, not any lump sum, but they would pay by the month so that the widow and children were at least mm -hmm. being taken care of. And then it would be up to the company to, to investigate and see whether the person had really just absconded and left you know, his family in the lurch or whether he was indeed dead. But um, this um, was um, a wonderful company. It was uh, kind of a family-oriented com uh, company. We um, uh, had a monthly breakfast where all the uh, agents and uh, district supervisors and so on would bring their families. and. Um, We'd either go to the Olympic Hotel or the uh, Washington Athletic Club or someplace like that where there was a big room uh, to have a meeting. And then the, uh, the women always were, uh, the wives were always uh, told um, just what all the business was and what their husbands were doing and so on. So they felt part of the, uh, the company. And um, I think you've got here a, a picture yeah, of our fifth anniversary. Is, is this the one here? No, no, that's the one okay, of the Okay, you can talk and I'll find it. All right. It. We, we, we uh, had tried to sort this it in was the order the, we wanted it. But it was in the armory, the, um, yeah. the only existing building that was uh, still there when they put in, uh, in 62, the World Fair in... Um, I'll find it. You uh, just keep the talking. city center. But uh, anyway, uh, that's where the, um, 
the birthday was, uh, it, we doubled every year and we were doing very well. Now, uh, needless to say, uh, the other insurance companies would get real unhappy uh, over <laughs> the, the slur on them. Uh, when we were formed, there were 20 Washington Mutual companies, and we were a Washington Mutual company. And the difference between a stock and a mutual is that uh, the uh, mutual company, the policyholders, own the company. And um, so anyway, they, um, there were 20 Washington Mutual companies, and finally we were the last one. The others had all been rehabilitated out of existence by Billy Sullivan, who had been in um, office, uh, well, he'd been in office 29 years, but not, uh, he hadn't been in office 29 years at the time that this was started. Still, um, he was, um, now there are many insurance commissioners that are very wonderful people and are honest. He was not, unfortunately, and um, did a lot of things. He was also fire warden for the state, and if you didn't play ball with him, he would um, say that your business was a fire hazard and close you down, so he had mm -hmm. quite a leeway. Now, the in other insurance companies, and there's three of them, and they will be nameless, um, came to him and um, put pressure on him to close us down, and he tried every way he could. He took us to court in uh, 48, um, and um, said that uh, we had used the reserves for the company or something. Uh, so we had a trial, and it was a, a trial on the merits of the case, uh, which most trials don't seem to be these days. But mm -hmm. anyway, uh, and the, um, the judge said um, that they were stronger than they'd ever been, and that uh, we certainly hadn't, and, and uh, it was illegal what he was doing, and he stopped them from, uh, from uh, doing it. Uh, from closing us down. Um, so he was still trying. All the years that we had this company, he tried legislating us out of business. He tried everything he could. Whenever uh, this, uh, the legislature was in session, uh, we had to move down to Olympia just to keep in business. Um, the company decided that they would move out to Federal Way. We were in town at mm -hmm. the time, first in the um, Dexter Horton building and then up on Queen Anne Hill at 1530 Queen Anne, later it was a, a TV. Yes. Yeah, for the friends, that, that's in other places. Uh, here, I want to get back to the location so they can comprehend what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. uh, Federal Way is now in modern day part of Seattle, is it not? No, it's an incorporated city of its own. It's the third largest in the state now. Oh, is it? Uh huh. Uh -huh. But it, it's right off of Highway 99, which goes... Yes, it's between Seattle and Tacoma. Okay. And uh, the one thing that was so beautiful about it, it yeah. has... We got pictures of that. Yes, somewhere. it has 10 mm -hmm. lakes within three miles. It mm -hmm. has... Um, uh, Seattle's industrial area is to its south, and Tacoma's industrial area is to its to north. north. And yeah. then you have all the job opportunities in the valley between Auburn and Canton and um, Renton. And so it is surrounded by, uh, it's, a, it's actually a bedroom um, facility for, you know, mm -hmm. a place to live while you um, can go to these other places to get your job. Now this was the beginning of Federal Way when, um, when it was just a kind of a wide spot in the road. And so we came out and bought 30 acres originally and put in um, a shopping center, mm -hmm. about 55 uh, building, uh, um, businesses. And um, then uh, we sold undivided interests in this shopping center, and the company uh, came out and had their home office mm -hmm. in the uh, center. And um, the people that now owned it, when they shopped, they put money in their own pocket, which yeah. was a nice way of doing it. Then they, in concert, well, First, uh, it, uh, it was a wide spot in the road, as I say, and there weren't very many uh, people. Mm -hmm. So our opening shot was actually part of that shopping center, is it not? Uh, the opening shot was, uh, yes, it was part of it, but a little later. It little was later. the okay, Old so World I'm Square. Yeah, okay. it was the Old World Square. But anyway, um, when, uh, and then we moved to Redondo, and I think you had an opening shot of the um, castle in Redondo, the didn't castle, you? The castle, uh, yeah, we have a... Um, yeah, well, yes, that's a close-up that, of that is, part that of it. That is part of it, and we, yeah. have, we do have one. We moved there yes. in 53. We have then one here somewhere. The, yeah, and then the shopping center, uh, it's right down on the floor, mm -hmm. I think. And then the shopping center um, started in 54. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, we found that... Um, 
that we really needed as much walk-in traffic as possible, and we needed to have people come from farther away. Now, statistically, it's been proved that people will go farther to eat dinner and, and to amuse themselves they went, than they will for anything else. That's right. So, yeah, so we put in seven buildings of themed rides. Um, each building was named uh, for a different state, and that state sent us a flag to fly, and um, there was a Florida building that had, we'd gotten the original um, uh, walls from uh, the Castle of A in France mm -hmm. and put in there, and uh, then it also had the Venetian area. And then we uh, hired a man who had escaped from behind the Iron Curtain, Hans Albrecht. And he came directly from uh, Europe to us, and we found that he was a wonderful craftsman. Uh, so he um, made a one-fifth replica of uh, Venice, and we had gondolas that mm -hmm. took them on the dark ride. And I was privileged to do a lot of the theming of, of the areas that they would be seeing as they're going through this dark ride. and. Um, uh, oh, there were many rides in the Florida building. Then we had the Wyoming building had the Mad Mouse, and it was uh, expensive and, and highly built because, of course, they, it had to be undercover and uh, to have a, I think it's about the only one, there aren't too many that I know of, mm -hmm. that, uh, that where you have a, um, a roller coaster mm -hmm. undercover. You know, yeah, never heard most of, of them Actually, are outside. Yeah, especially back in those days. You're you know, right. So. And then we had one that was England, and uh, you know, we had the uh, Tower of London and a lot of things in that, and it was fun. So they were beautiful buildings. Um, then um, they sold undivided interests in Santa Fe, this, mm -hmm. this amusement park, too. And then those people were part of the group, Federal Way and, Fed and the Southwest Eight, we called it, the uh, Southwest Eight Acres of, um, of um, the shopping center, uh, that uh, band together and bought 150 acres from the east side. And I think you have a picture. Um, yeah, we have one a, of those. Um, we had a torch to back, I believe. That, um, I have to apologize, but we had it all in order. And then <laughs> And it's, then I we think moved toward it the front. around again. But anyway, it's all right. Um, they will get to what uh, the idea. Yeah. Uh, it was between 99 and I-5 that was just coming in at that time, and between 320th and 312th. Three, uh, three, uh, 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 so the 150 acres in that area, and we uh, got an architect down in um, California, uh, Beckett. He was a wonderful architect, and he designed, yes, this, this is, is it. the one right here. No, it's this, this one right one. here. This, um, if you'll notice that there are, there are uh, numbers on all these areas, and this, these are ownerships, so the, all the different owners that we had to buy the property from I'll, I'll hold that in order so. to get the 150 acres. So. But anyway. Can, can you see it there? Yes, okay. yes, very good. And so that um, was the, the uh, was supposed to be the Golden Square. Now all the shopping, um, all the, um, uh, the parking was going to be underground. Mm -hmm. There was a reflection pool in the middle, uh, and Mount Rainier looks over the whole thing, so it is reflected right in the pool. It was going to be a gorgeous thing. And then the, um, uh, the, the owners uh, spent about 190000 in um, bulldozing, um, making the land ready, and putting in a $200,000 building uh, with a um, uh, bowling alley and so on. And that was part of a complex that was going to be federal um, way shop, uh, no, not shopping, um, athletic club. Mm -hmm. Uh, they felt that uh, families need to do things together, together as much yeah. as they can. Well, maybe the, the mother and father might like to go bowling, and the kids may want to go ice skating or go to the, the theater or whatever. So they were going to have all that in one complex mm -hmm. so they could all go to it together, do their thing, and all go home mm -hmm. together. together you know? yeah. uh, so that was started. And... Um, um, and then for the first two years that we were there, we put together two by two slides of um, uh, the beauty of Federal Way, mm -hmm. 
uh, of course, the lakes and the fact that it was the highest point between Seattle and Tacoma, and it was usually uh, above the fog. You know, unfortunately, SeaTac mm -hmm. is right, right down where most of right. the fog is. Yeah, but for the friends that don't live here, uh, fog is very, um, actually, this is, in, uh, winter this is in winter, and this yeah. is summertime, and we have fog already because it's so close to the open ocean. And so for the friends that live totally inland, um, we are yeah, fog on there very often. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but anyway, um, I think we overdid it a bit because we invited, we had these uh, dinner meetings where people would come and different organizations like churches, the women in the church group that wanted to make some money for the church or something while they'd put on the dinner for us. And then we would uh, show the um, pictures and the talk to um, uh, investors, people that uh, were putting up housing areas, you know, big housing areas yeah. and stuff. But now Federal Way has gotten so big. So big Every time yeah. I go there, I don't know the streets anymore. But um, anyway, um, everything was going beautifully. Uh, my husband was made, yes. I want to ask you about the islands. Oh, um, yeah. The islands, in, in fact, uh, I, we on our Channel 4, they did a little story on one of the islands. Um, I believe it's called, uh, give me a name of it. Well, we had four islands. Castle, we had Castle the house one. on. That's yeah. the, it's Castle Island. I just, it, that um, just aired here not too long ago. Oh, really? Yes, they did. They, they, uh, uh, the name of that show is called Northwest Back Roads, and they did a I show see. on the wildlife and things on that island. Oh, for goodness mm -hmm. sakes. Um, it was, um, the house was built of uh, stones that had come from Scotland. Mm -hmm. And um, they were hand-hewn and uh, very different. And it had um, a crenellated um, turret. That, that's where it got its name. Castle was from that. Uh, and then it had a, a, a um, flag uh, pole up there. And I would go and put the Jolly Roger sometime when, I, when yeah. the ships would come by. And I was trying to scare them to, away. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, yeah. it was a wonderful island. And then we had chocolate. It was a bigger island. And light. And light is down there in front someplace. It, mm -hmm. um, uh, the Queen of England gave us six dollars a year to keep a light on that island. Now those islands were all in Ganges Harbor on Salt Spring Island. Mm -hmm. And um, then we had a fifth island that was the Company Island. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would, uh, we had a, a projection room where we um, showed pictures, training pictures to the men. And then when they had their all-day session why their wives and their children would come over to my, our island we had uh, set up barracks for the for them, and then uh, each family would have uh, their own. Well, it was tent. It was wood floor, and halfway up it was wood, and then it was tent over the top part. And uh, they had uh, the showers and facilities there. And uh, then we had a couple real nice English women that came out, and they would cook for them. So mm -hmm. they would um, eat there, or they would come over to our island, and we'd have uh, dinners and things, barbecues and things on the beach, yeah. and. Um, so it was a lot of fun. And then we had 185 acres on Salt Spring Island, and we um, made Gold Colony. Gold Colony was um, named for the first um, colony that was on there in the early days in the 1800s. And that was the last uh, place where the um, uh, slaves that were escaping from the south, they would go north into mm -hmm. Canada and across uh, many of them to that island. In fact, there was, my husband started a Lions Club on that island, and um, one of the members was a, a millionaire um, black man who had, uh, his parents, I guess, had uh, in the early days Sudden had been care. a, a uh, slave, mm -hmm. and he, they had escaped to that island. Uh, but it's, um, it's, now it's mostly retired Englishmen mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. It's a lovely island, quite a long one. So life was good and prosperous, and it seemed to be going along. Everything just was going fine. good, but we still had to watch uh, old Billy Sullivan. And um, uh, my husband was made before we get into what Billy did. Uh, my husband was made president of the National Association mm -hmm. of Life Companies. Now, in '62, when the World Fair was on in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Uh, they had a convention out in Seattle of the um, different insurance companies, and uh, he was in charge of the um, uh, the men, the uh, workshops and things for the men, and I had the women and the children. We took them to Santa Fe and, and so on, and I um, had them for lunch at our house and this sort of thing. 
there were about 173, I think, children. There, and not everybody brought their children, of course. But um, mm -hmm. anyway, we had a lot of fun with him. And then the next year, he was made president. We were having a um, convention uh, down in Phoenix, Arizona, when we got word that the Securities Exchange Commission, which, uh, when it was formed, was a temporary agency. And now, nobody wants to be a temporary, <laughs> you don't have a temporary right. yeah. uh, job. You want a permanent one, and they want big offices like anybody else. And uh, so the SEC has uh, gone around um, destroying thousands of good little businesses. They go into their, their uh, customers and uh, their suppliers, and they say, oh, what do you know about this company? The, That's right. The um, government's investigating it. Well, in those days, uh, people were a little more naive than they are now, and they assumed that if the government was investigating uh, somebody, something. why something must be <laughs> was trouble with must it. Be up, yeah. And so there was the death knell for the company. But anyway, uh, they were wanted to get their hot little fists into the insurance industry because at that time, it isn't true now, but at that time, uh, insurance companies were the biggest financial institutions in the mm -hmm. world. And boy, could they have big offices. And uh, so they were in Washington, D.C. when we were having this convention down at Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we voted, and it was it passed uh, to just stop the convention right midstream, mm -hmm. which we did. And we went to Washington, D.C. and successfully defeated them. Mm -hmm. uh, so then Jack had a real powerful enemy. And um, so the insurance commissioner and the SEC director for the state of Washington got what, their little what, heads what does, together. Uh, for the French that don't understand what that agency stands for. The SEC, mm -hmm. Securities Exchange Commission. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, right. Um, they, um, uh, Billy got a little, uh, Mr. S uh, Commissioner Sullivan mm -hmm. got a bill it was a rider on a bill that had nothing to do about mm -hmm. insurance uh, in the state legislature that said no Washington mutual company can have more than a certain percentage of their assets in one enterprise. That's right. Knowing exactly what they had in uh, the shopping center mm -hmm. because at taxpayer expense, he had uh, examiners in our office nine months out of the year. It was hard to get our books to do business. And so because of that, he could go in one Friday, close down everybody, fire them, the employees, and at the same time, the uh, Securities Exchange mm -hmm. Commission uh, director came in and seized uh, the shopping center mm -hmm. and said that they were selling per, um, securities without a permit. Mm -hmm. Now, we had had it adjudicated before we started selling. Um, when they got this 150 acres, they wanted to uh, make the money to get the buildings themselves rather than to go to New York or someplace mm -hmm. to uh, have to pay um, a, a big interest to borrow money. So they were selling the peripheral land that That's they didn't right, yeah. need to shopping centers and high rise and that sort of thing. And so um, we had taken it to Judge, um, uh, wasn't Judge Allen, uh, Judge, or was it Judge Allen? Well, he was later Supreme Court judge, but he was superior at that time. I think it was Allen. Anyway, he said no, that it, you don't need a permit. You're, you're uh, selling your own uh, yeah, real property, estate, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so they knew that when they finally got to court, it wouldn't hold out, that uh, it wouldn't hold up that, uh, that uh, we needed a security. So they had to do something else. Now, I came the day after the insurance commissioner had uh, closed us all down. I came over to the office and I came out the back stairway and I looked down at the side and here was um, trucks backed up and they were putting uh, records of the company and they were putting a lot of our own personal stuff in mm -hmm. there. And um, so I went up to find out from Jack what in the world was going on. And boy, they were sure making a jumble of the whole mess there. And then uh, the Times headlines were uh, federal O-line 
Yeah, I'm not sure, but I, I saw a paper in here, in, in our thing here, where it shows you load, I don't you think load up a truck. No, that, no, uh, that's that's the wrong one. that was the wrong one. But anyway, yeah. it said uh, federal online uh, records in chaotic condition. <laughs> well, they certainly were, but they yeah. didn't say how they got yeah. that way. <laughs> and then the um, uh, uh, SEC, uh, of course, the court appointed a receiver. Now that's real interesting. Uh, the SEC is what's called a creature of the courts, and as such, they could pick their judge. And they picked mm -hmm. a man who wasn't even a judge; he was a lawyer against us in a case. Mm -hmm. And now he becomes our judge. And ordinarily, you would have him recused, needless to that's say. Right, yeah. But you have to get the judge's permission to recuse him. And naturally, he wants to be our judge. He doesn't want to be recused, so he wouldn't give his permission. No. So now he becomes our judge, and he's still there. Mm -hmm. And um, Yes, you wanted yeah, to say. Yeah, I need to say something. I hear a lot of children. I don't know if it's in, if if I hear it or not. But they saw it in a film with our with our flow here. Um, do you, does anybody know where those children are? I, I don't I don't know if you if you can hear them or not. They're interfering with us a little bit. So I apologize if you hear a lot of little voices. That's beyond our control. So I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm being so we quiet. We haven't tied I'm anybody. I'm being up. so quiet. I don't want to interfere with your story at all. It's oh, just so right. fascinating. <laughs> so can we go back to where we were, please? All right. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, um, the SEC. Anyway, uh, they appointed oh, the they judge appointed, that used to be an attorney. Yeah, that was they appointed. Well, it, yes, this uh, this uh, judge mm -hmm. um, appoints a receiver for the shopping center. And the first thing they do, oh, I didn't tell you about the historic park that we had out in the corner. We had brought the Denny cabin. We had bought it and brought it from mm -hmm. Queen Anne Hill oh, yeah, out for the park. We had taken the, um, uh, the uh, um, what do you call it when you go uh, and you, in the early days when you um, didn't pay for land, you homestead it. The homestead cabin, mm -hmm. yes, this is the Denny uh, cabin that uh, is preserved by a Federal Way Historic Society mm -hmm. now. Uh, that was, um, uh, it was a lot of things on Queen Anne Hill. It was a tavern, I think, when we bought it, mm -hmm. but it had been Denny's cabin. A lot of other things had been in there. I think even a real estate outfit at one time was in there. But um, then the, uh, the homestead cabin was Barker, who had homesteaded the land that we had put the shopping center on. Mm -hmm. My maiden name is Barker, so I was particularly happy to go to the homestead cabin. And it uh, it was a nice cabin. It had a stone fireplace in it mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, we put that in, and we put the Hudson Bay cabin. We would got found it in Buckley, but actually it had been brought to Buckley, I believe, from Vancouver, Washington, at mm -hmm. least down in the south. Uh, Hudson Bay in the early days had um, trading posts with the Indians, mm -hmm. and this was one of the early ones, so we wanted to preserve it in the state. Mm -hmm. Buckley and, uh, is a little town, a little, yes, a little it's east, uh, towards the east. No? Yes, um, uh, uh, let's see, town. a little northeast, I think, of uh, Puella. Puella, by Puella, Buckley, Edenclaw, and, and some, so on. Some there and Diamond Head and things like yeah, that. Right. Yeah, going uh -huh. east. Okay. And they were feeding pigs in it and so on out there. Oh, <laughs> so we thought there was a better use for it. <laughs> but anyway, we got um, a, a church from the Muckleshoot Indian Reservation. Mm -hmm. Uh, they uh, were, it was falling to rack and ruin and they weren't using it and so um, their tribal le leader was uh, a woman and um, so we uh, talked to her and she said that they would love to have some playground equipment for their children so we traded them. We got mm -hmm. them a bunch of playground equipment for the children and we got the church. It was um, in the early trading days in the 1800s it was um, given by uh, the, uh, a place near Boston, Massachusetts, and there was a, um, cab, a, a um, bell that they had given in the um, tower of it, and um, that was included. I'm going to interrupt you again. I'm, I'm really apologize. There's some children that's really interfering with the show. Where are they? In Studio B. In Studio B. Okay, I'm oh. sorry. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> right. But anyway, so when the SEC took over, the first thing they did, second thing, the first thing was to cut, burn down our, our um, building, uh, the um, 
Alaska building with the totem pole in it. That was the first thing. And the, um, we have witnesses that saw the men start the fire and then run away. But anyway, the second thing was to go out to the historic park. We had a restaurant out there, and we had deep freezes with um, food in it and um, uh, a lot of meat and things like that for the restaurant and um, refrigerators full of food. They took them and just dumped them in, uh, in the city dump, all full. And um, they tried to get rid of everything. Both the insurance commissioner and the SEC got rid of everything just as fast as they could before it was adjudicated, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, they went out and gave um, one of the things that we had gotten uh, for the seven buildings of themed rides, Santa Fe, was the original chair that Marie Antoinette was carried through the streets That's of right. Paris. Yeah. So they took that chair, priceless, and they gave it to um, the uh, electrician because he had the keys to the buildings. And so then they had the keys to the buildings. So they went in and just raped the place. Do you suppose yes. he knew what that really was? I don't know whether he you did don't or know? not. I don't know, but he certainly could. He wouldn't have thought it was anything for anything any maybe, centuries. That we maybe it's still out there. That's why. I'm well, upset yes, that I heard about out there um, oh, about eight years ago, I guess it was. Sparks came to me and said, "I still am I'm keeping mm -hmm. that for you whenever you want it." But um, at the time, we were still uh, we weren't in any position to take it, and I don't know where it is now. It'd be interesting to find out. Yeah. There was a sedan, or there was a chair from the Doge's Palace in Venice mm -hmm. too that was original, and many other things. Uh, but they um, gave away or sold. We had gotten two double-decker buses from England and brought them over on the ship, and um, they sold those for less than it uh, took to pay for the uh, license yeah. for the year. Mm -hmm. um, we had a. Um, $5,000 big uh, cedar log that was just tremendous. We were going to make a doorway through it and have it standing upright, and it was going to be a big um, totem pole, the biggest in the world, if we had uh, finished it. And um, we had a man carving on it, and they gave that away to somebody. Gave that away, yeah. Uh, so it was certainly a rape of those buildings. Uh, but um, the, uh, the receiver, um, now Jack had made... Uh, well, uh, hindsight had made a mistake of personally signing uh, as well as the company signing on a mortgage in one of the buildings in the middle of the center. And um, so with the receiver, instead of um, uh, taking the, the rents that had mm -hmm. come from those buildings to pay the mortgages, uh, they um, uh, used it for the lawyers to put the companies out of business. Out of business, and, uh, yeah. And um, then they go back on the signer, which was J.R. Now, uh, Jack, um, he was called J.R. by all of his uh, friends. Um, they, had to, they had to keep Jack, get Jack out of it. Of course, they stopped the money right away. They froze the company's money. So we were um, paying for... Um, for a secretary and for the court costs and things ourselves. It takes a while. It's just like a, a, a clock. Uh, a clock doesn't stop because you stop winding it. It takes a while for it to run down. And so when this happened, uh, you don't always get all the ramifications right away. Uh, but there were we were slapped with so many different lawsuits that, um, and we couldn't afford to hire lawyers. Now, you wanted to say something? Yeah, yeah it, can, can, we, can we turn this off? It, whatever is happening in Studio B is, is coming through here. Can we shut that down from here? No? And then we just have to live with it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry about this. Sometimes the devil tries everything he can do I to, get, oh, <laughs> to you get, get you. <laughs> Kid, this is very true. This is what happens. It's just interfering with yeah. us just because. Yeah, okay. right. We have an explanation, so it'll be just fine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So go ahead. <laughs> Vivian's gone to see what she can do. Yeah, so that's uh, the But anyway, um, the... Um, 
um, the um, SEC, um, before again it had gone to court, had um, gone back against the signers. All right, now they tried. They tried everything they could to get rid of Cisna. Uh, they um, they uh, said, "Come on down to Olympia. We'll have a meeting, mm -hmm. and we'll try to get all this settled." So Jack went down there, and then they had a cameraman and an um, uh, undressed girl, and they were going to have a compromising oh, when picture. I'm yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But uh, he never went any place alone, and so he had one of the men from the office with him, and that didn't that work didn't because work, they yeah. had a, 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 a witness. Um, so then he would walk. Ac he'd walk across uh, uh, at the light across uh, 312th, and a car would come out and mm -hmm. you know and try to knock him down. Well, he jumped out of that and got yeah. out of that. Yeah, so that's then, what he they actually tried to kill him. Oh, they, yeah, did. they did. And mm -hmm. then he would go in the yard, and we had uh, wrought iron gates to our place, and um, mm -hmm. but they were open. We never closed them. They <laughs> they're closed now. Uh, the people had to pay two thousand two million dollars for the um, the house uh, recently, so I guess they want the gates closed. But anyway, at that time it was worth about two hundred thousand. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they uh, say that there isn't any um, uh, that everything is going uh, nicely uh, mm -hmm. like it uh, did in the past. But boy, mm -hmm. I tell you, the prices of things are so much better. So, so then somewhere along the line, some. There was something going on, on with Warehouse. I don't remember exactly what you said. And as we saw it, you took your Well, children. yes, uh, Warehouse's son was um, uh, was kidnapped about that mm -hmm. time, and um, uh, so the, the um, Jack had several narrow uh, escapes of being uh, killed. And then I was uh, uh, every place I went, I was followed. Have to go to the girls' room to keep out of, from mm -hmm. away from the people that were following me. And then they started on the kids. Now, um, Scarf, the uh, Scarf people that have the uh, motor, uh, Ford Motor down in mm -hmm. uh, um, Auburn, had a house right next door to ours. And at the time, they had moved out and they were renting the place or going to rent it. Mm -hmm. and it was empty. And we would look up there, and here were men with spy glasses watching everything we did outside. And we knew that that probably was going to be the next thing. And then, of course, Jack would have to do what they said yeah. if, if they had our children. So uh, the older three children were um, graduated high school and were gone now, but it was just uh, Scott and Kent, the two younger mm -hmm. two, that were still uh, at home. And so we, um, uh, we just rented the house to some airline hostesses, and I took, um, well, we both moved the family with the U-Drive truck, and uh, we left most of the furniture in the house. Mm -hmm. Um, I took the dining room set and uh, the, sun, the sunroom and, uh, and a few things, but um, and about seven tons of books. <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyway, um, we um, went back to Cisna Park, Illinois. It was named for my husband's great uncle, and there's only 800 people in the town. It's yeah. about a hundred miles south of Chicago. And um, then, uh, if um, there's any strangers in the town, everybody knows everybody it. Everybody knows it. Yeah, yeah I've so been, I've they been could in that be, area. I they could be uh, so. safe. And, um, mm -hmm. uh, and so then he kept an apartment in Seattle in his law office and uh, tried to fight uh, this through in the mm -hmm. courts. And I came back, uh, flew out one time to help him uh, with a trial, mm -hmm. and. Um, I uh, was reading the paper and I noticed that our house was up for uh, a sheriff's uh, auction. Yeah. And uh, we didn't owe even taxes on it. And uh, it had been, um, we had paid off the mortgage, it was free and clear. And um, come to find out, uh, they, uh, the uh, receiver of, appointed by the SEC, uh, well, the judge, but uh, through the SEC's intervention, had. Um, uh, gone back to the owners, uh, to the uh, signer on the mortgage, right. and said, uh, "You owe a hundred and seventy thousand dollars." Well, we'd been selling off the islands and everything else that we owned up on uh, Salt Spring, in order to pay for court costs and uh, things like that, and um, uh, we didn't have a hundred and seventy thousand at the moment. Yeah. And uh, so, anyway, um, they yes. 
Yeah, no, fin finish your thought. Oh. We're almost at the end of the show, and you had asked me to let you know because you had a personal thought. Oh, yeah. So, okay. so what I was going to do is maybe leave a cliffhanger so in next week's shows we can sort of pick up at that time period All and right. then go into some of That's the That's wonderful, things. but I did want everyone to know mm -hmm. that while bad things happen to us, I'm not here saying, oh, ain't it awful, and yeah. trying to get uh, sympathy. I don't need any sympathy. I'm doing mm -hmm. just fine. I want um, it brought out because people have to realize that our freedoms are taken away from That's us right. mm -hmm. uh, if we don't do something about it ourselves. And my husband was um, offered a judgeship. He was offered presidency of two other insurance companies. Well, he ran for governor. I have a little... Yes, he uh, ran have, for governor, but the only reason he ran for governor was because they wouldn't let us tell the truth. The, mm -hmm. the, uh, the papers and things had exactly opposite from what, what the truth was. And the only way he could get to the public to tell the truth was yeah. to run for office. Yes, That's and then right. down in front there's mm -hmm. one too that um, yeah. go far with JR. Now that is actually when he was international counselor with Lions Club. But anyway, yeah. um, it, um, the people need to always be, you know, we have died, I mean there have been thousands of people that have died for us to inherit freedom. That's right. And we've got to to always be working at freedom. We cannot sit on our duff and expect mm -hmm. freedom to be uh, handed, to, handed us. to us by somebody else. Yeah. Number one is our jury. That is the, the main reason for our, um, the main way that we uh, can, um, can protect our freedom mm -hmm. and our vote. There's a lot of people that won't even vote. vote. That's right. They say, well, one vote doesn't mean anything. One vote does mean. It, does. it means a lot, and it is your way of, and then it isn't enough just to vote. Mm -hmm. You're not done when you vote. Mm -hmm. You don't go on a holiday and let the legislature mm -hmm. take over. You, you watch who your, what your senators are doing. You watch who your representatives mm -hmm. are doing. What bills come up? What are they about? How are they voting? And if you don't like the way they vote, you get on the hotline and you tell them, or you send them That's a fax right. or an email. You tell them, always be conscious, or you're going to lose your freedoms. Almost every week, I hear of another freedom going down the drain because the drain. people are sitting there. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to bring in the, up to you, them for. Yes, this is like when we talked about uh, jury duty, it's an honor. It's your duty to go on jury duty and understand what's involved here because when you are an educated juror, that is the f exactly. supposed to be the first branch of government. And in this day and age, that's the only way your voice will be heard because you can actually stand up and say, well, I didn't say that. And yeah. it was 1890 was the last mm -hmm. time that they really told the jury uh, their uh, rights. Mm -hmm. And that was the fact that they can nullify a law that is a bad law and they vote their conscience. That's right. So, so it, and to feature and some of the some of the friends, we're trying to change that now. But the first thing you have to do, you have to register to vote. If you register to vote, then that'll give you the right to be an, on a jury. So, like you say, you can't right. just say something and then take a holiday. So it's very important. And everybody lives close mm -hmm. to a fire station. Well, they That's register right. you right at the fire station. So uh, they go to rock concerts now and 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 <laughs> vote right. you at the rock concert yeah. and, and places like that because you know. Um, some, of, some of us, the older generation, and some of the baby boomers we have went through things that uh, as law-abiding citizens, we didn't have a clue this was going to come for us and we should not have allowed that to be in vain. This is a lesson for other people. Yes. And to, to stand up and the be The most counted. precious gift you have is the right to vote. Mm -hmm. And so many people are just throwing it over. Yeah. And this being an election year anyway, um, it, usually I stay politically neutral, but we're talking about this in a very in a very broad sense. And myself being a foreigner, I do appreciate the American way uh, yes. in that sense. And as a foreigner, sometimes I recognize that uh, long before Americans do that, your freedom is being taken. Yeah. A little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. And so it's time time to change and it I think it's just wonderful you can sit here and share these things with us and 
we can smile about it, um, even though it was very traumatic, I'm sure, for you to yeah. experience that. But if we can learn from that. But you thank God for everything that everything. happens to you mm -hmm. because good will come of it. Mm -hmm. God always works it out for good. Uh -huh. Yeah, so when I wrote my book, I thanked everybody that did me harm. So I could tell about it and would have a, mm -hmm. you know, and would have a And a no story moves smoothly unless you have a villain, does it? <laughs> that's very true. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's very true. Well, it got real quiet here, so whatever we did, um, took, the, took, um, Vivian went after them. Vivian did after, <laughs> yeah, but like you said, you know, sometimes we have disturbances. And uh, it is really kind of important that we tell that story. Do we have any time left here where we can maybe go another story we have a little just a little time left did you want to add something personal or should we go just a little further in your story here um, well let me finish the thought that I had on uh, going back to the um, the signer on the mortgage they put the house on the market and then I got an anonymous call and the man wouldn't say who he was but he said you better watch it he said um, your bad guys are um, going to the auction and they're going to offer over 200,000 for your house and um, they have scared off everybody else so they only they're only one there and sure enough they got it for 35,000 uh, <laughs> one that has just been sold for two million but anyway then they said all right now you've got 35,000 uh, uh, dollars credit for your 170,000 what else have you got well we had five houses well six uh, in Redondo uh, right on the water um, a complex and um, they did the same thing with those and got those for 35,000 so then we had 70,000 well what else have you got so we had a couple lots right next to the new lumber company in the middle of Federal Way and those were worth 200,000 at that time and, um, and so they got those at a, a very reduced price too uh, so eventually uh, they took uh, most of our property, but they said, all right, now uh, you own the, the land um, or the building. The uh, shopping center, now let's see, um, then we were given another anonymous tip that we better go into Valin's court because there was some skullduggery going on. Uh, we had another, uh, was, we were on another court, uh, and Jack couldn't come in, but I went in during recess in his court, and the court reporter was gone. Everybody was gone, and he was selling off the best land, the spinoff at 320th um, from I-5 uh, <coughs> to um, his little buddies at 30 cents a square foot. Now, at that time, That's the land right. out there was between 7 and $10 a square foot, and we had on the books the land at the value of two dollars a square foot so now he's selling it at 30 cents a square foot and then he says see there's fraud involved yeah, because it's only, worth, <laughs> it's only worth 30, so 30 cents a square foot uh, so um it um it is one of those things that you've got to um and of course the judge is still um He's still operating there in the mm -hmm. bankruptcy court. Yeah, and in, in back in uh, a lot of the, the people from that era are not with us anymore, but, but some of them have been documented and some of them found their way um, to, to work around it. And, uh, but you know, I found that, um, that truth is usually the last thing that gets into court. That's right. Now, you know, you wouldn't think that that would be possible but the judge by disallowing mm -hmm. evidence um, and all the little tricks that go in uh, is um, is just catastrophic yeah. and then we asked for a jury mm -hmm. and in all of the trials that we had we were never allowed, allowed a jury. jury yeah and no, i see that that's the thing here we covered some of that in in the uh, in in the jury show and yeah. simply because if you had had a jury some of this it would have been never quite happened. different, yeah. But even so, um, after five years of going yeah. through the courts, McNichol, the judge that heard the case on the merits, said that the insurance commissioner had acted without justification That's in fact right. or law and had asked him to put the company back. But by then he had sold the company. Yeah. He, had, he had taken all the, the uh, eight home offices around the state, had sold them. He had gutted the thing. It was gone. Yeah, we, we, it got, wasn't we got... Um, 
pictures of some of them here. Not yeah, those are them. some of the uh, little home offices mm -hmm. around the state. Yeah. Uh, let's see, that's Everett and North Seattle and Tacoma's and in Tacoma, there. And Tacoma, yeah. And so, in a way, you did turn out to be the Tuckers of insurance, you told me. Yes. Uh, now, Preston Tucker was a man who, in 1948, are we getting too close to I the end? I think so. Um, okay. He we'll said, tell we, that. We can't go there. Let's we'll leave tell that, that next time. Cliffhanger. And um, yeah, it, I, I'm just, I'm just amazed how uh, sometimes it takes quite a while for people to feel comfortable enough to come forward. Because, see, when when we hear things happening to people, uh, oh well, it's it's just. Yeah. Oh well, and then when it moves sort of closer to you and hits your backyard, and then yeah. all of a sudden it um, becomes a little more personal. And injustice has happened to thousands, thousands and thousands of people, of people in America, mm -hmm. and um, we've got to always be vigilant. We mm -hmm. can never let our guard down. We've always been. We've got to try to have justice in America. Our um, salute to the flag says justice for all, for all. but uh, mm -hmm. we just hope it would be, but it isn't. Yeah, and uh, each citizen can walk out of their home one day and not come back. So yeah, and uh, right. we we had talked about some of these things on some of the other shows. So so when you leave, um, uh, when you, when you leave, just make sure that you. Um, have a general idea what time you're coming back, and we know when we're coming back next week, same time. The continuation part number two for the story. Thank you, Evelyn. I will see you next week, and um, you. until then, bye.